Hello everyone, my name is Linda and welcome to Cottage and Crime Farm. On this channel we will be discussing true crime cases. If this is of interest to you and you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. I will really, really appreciate it. So, just a quick disclaimer, I am not an expert. This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please do your own research and form your own opinions. The sources I've used will be linked down below. Also, feel free to correct me if I get anything wrong. So, let's talk about Daisy de Malka, South Africa's infamous first known serial killer. Daisy, so let's talk about Daisy before she became Deadly Daisy. Daisy Louisa Hankin Smith was born on the 1st of June, 1886. She was born near Grahamstown in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. She was born in a place called Three Fountains, where people had subsistence farms. So people weren't doing bad, and her dad wasn't poor, but the colony was, because remember this was 1886. So she grew up without electricity and running water and things like that. But most importantly, there were 11 children in total. So there were a lot of mouths to feed. So this would not um, in any way be enough to support the family. And her dad was an ambitious man. He talked about going north for quite a while. And then he finally went. But what in those days when you said that you were going up north, it actually meant that you were going to look for gold. This wasn't the case here. He was talking about going to Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. Again, at the time, Zimbabwe was also. So he was talking about getting more land, having a bigger farm, and providing better for his family. At the age of 10, Daisy was sent to join them. Now, some of the sources say that she was sent to avoid the looming war that was going on in South Africa. I don't agree with that, and we'll get back to that. But anyway, she went there, um, probably, in my opinion, just to do housework, to sew and cook, because in those days when you were 10, you knew how to do those things. To this day, I only know how to do one of those things. But anyway... At the age of 13, she got to go to the Good Hope Seminary Boarding School in, in Cape Town. So that was an indication that her dad was doing really well and she got an excellent education. The whole time she was there, she was there from 1899 till 1903, the Anglo-Boer South African War was going on. She uh, got an excellent education. And during one of the holidays, uh, and at the school, she was described as being pretty and smart and, quote, having the most unimaginable black hair, but nonetheless described as pretty and intelligent and charming. So during one of her visits, holidays, when she went back, she met a man called Ben Fuller. Now, some of the sources say that she fell in love with him. But if we think about what she did later, this couldn't possibly be true. So, but he fell in love with her and he asked her to marry him. She said, however, that she wanted to become a nurse and she came back to South Africa and she did three years of training. She did not complete the training and on one, on the visit back there again, she couldn't resist him anymore. Um, and probably because he had a really, really good job as an assistant manager of Native Affairs, which is all other thing that, you know, colonialism, won't get into that now. But he had a good job for the purposes of this video. He had a good job, paid well, and she would have had a very, very comfortable life. She would have had a cook, a gardener, a car in those days. Very, very comfortable life. I mean, even today, but in those days very very comfortable however he then got transferred to go to Matsetsi if I mispronounce that I apologize um, and that was Bushveld and Bushveld is very very beautiful for some people but for Daisy it wasn't she she didn't want to live there it wasn't 
green pretty and there were, weren't a lot of people so she would have been comfortable but bored and it wasn't what she had in mind so all of a sudden she said no i i want to i want to finish my minus i want to do that and he supported her and she came back to south africa they were planning to get married in october of 1907 so she finished school in 1903 and this was now 1907, so now she was 19, 20 years old, and she came back. But as soon as she got off the train, she heard that he was on his deathbed. He had, he got backwater fever, which is a very, very dangerous complication of malaria. So she rushed, rushed back to his bedside, and then on the day they were supposed to get married, or they would have gotten married if she didn't decide that she want to postpone it he died so instead of wearing white daisy was wearing black uh, he already changed his will and daisy received a hundred pounds um, in that will and then she came back to south africa to finish her training